This video is on multiple bonds. So, so far we have been drawing molecules and building molecules and talking about structures and shapes and all that such with single bonds, but now we're going to talk about double and triple and we'll practice drawing them as well. So, number of electrons. So, a single bond is what we've been doing so far. So, you should know that single bonds have two electrons that make them up, one from each atom. And so when you draw this, right, you could draw it something like this, or you could draw it with the line in between like this. All right, so double bonds then would be made up of four electrons. So you've got now two from each atom. So here where you could have, oops, here we go. Like X gives its two, and maybe A gives its two. So you've got this right here. So this would be one way to draw a double bond. Or you could draw two lines. Because remember, one line is the same as two dots. All right. So a triple bond then would be made of six electrons. So they're each donating three. So here's where you could have one, two, three, and then one, two, three. And it's not necessarily those three. Like, it doesn't matter. What we're showing is that there's six total between them. So writing this with lines would be three lines like this. All right. So when it comes to length and strength, this is just relative, what we're, what we're um, writing here. So relative to each other, uh, single bonds are the longest. And triple bonds then are the shortest. So that would make double bonds in between. Okay? Um, so like shortest to longest, right? It increases as you go triple to double to single. Um, in terms of the strength, your single bonds being the longest are your weakest, which makes your triple bonds the strongest. So they get stronger as you go, as you increase your bond number. Um, one other thing to note is that single bonds um, really can happen between any atom, but there is rotation around them. There is no rotation if you have a double and triple bond. And we, when we build with the model kits, you'll see this in class. You'll see what I mean more with this. Um, common elements that make double bonds would be carbon and oxygen. You'll see that'll happen a lot. Or other elements in those groups. Um, triple bonds, carbon also triple bonds a lot. But, car, uh, but also nitrogen does. So let's do some practice drawing here of these. All right, so let's, um, let's start with like CO2, carbon dioxide. All right, so we'll do the steps just like we did before. So if I draw the pieces, carbon dioxide, carbon has four valence electrons. And I've got two oxygens, oops, each with six. All right, so what will be in the middle will be my carbon because it still has the most available bonds, four single uh, electrons. So I'm going to draw that first. All right, so now I'm going to bond everything to this with a single bond. I always start there, and then I see if I have to have double or triple bonds to make this worked out still with the octet rule. So carbon, so if I do one oxygen on this side... All right, so there's my oxygen. Now, I'm going to put the other oxygen in a single bond to my central atom, uh, but I'm going to do it on the opposite side because I know that Vesper theory is going to apply where everything is going to be as spaced out as part as possible. All right, so what I have here now is I have the single electrons. So this one is single, this one is single, this one, and this one. And I know that that's not going to stay like that. Right? If you ever leave a molecule like this with single electrons, you are doing something wrong. 
So I have to go in and figure out, well, how can I give all of these eight valence electrons, sharing, giving, taking, whatever, and this is going to be um, a covalent molecule. And what can happen is these electrons can shift. So what I mean by that is this electron right here on the oxygen can shift into this space in between the two elements, as can one of these on the carbon. Which one it is doesn't matter. Okay, and then these over here can do the same. So notice they're still getting, right, for the bond, one from each atom, right? It's not the two carbon ones that are going together, but it's one from each atom, and they're going to go into that shared bonding space. So what this will actually look like is carbon with an oxygen on either side and a double bond between them. And I can see here that carbon has its full octet, right? Carbon's really happy. But if I don't draw the other valence electrons in oxygen, oxygen is not happy. Each oxygen has four. So I'm going to draw the other um, two pairs, so the other four electrons. And I'm going to draw them. They're not always like this, but I'm going to draw them like this. Because really, this is how they would look, because they'd be equally spaced out. Now, another way to write this would be with the lines, where I still would have to draw those lone pairs around oxygen. Now, this would be, in terms of shape, I hope you can see that this would be linear with bond angles of 180. This would be um, nonpolar covalent because it's equally balanced, it's symmetrical, and I've got the same things attached. All right, let's try another one. Let's do uh, N2. So two nitrogens. All right, so each nitrogen has five valence electrons. So here are my pieces. All right, so if I only have two things, I don't have to worry about what's in the middle, right? But I am going to start by attaching them with single bonds. So here's my one, and then I'm going to put this other one right next to it here. But notice I still have two single electrons for each of those other, on those other two spots, on each nitrogen. So what's going to happen is these two are going to come in here and make a bond, and then these two will also do that. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get nitrogen with a triple bond to another nitrogen. And notice I'm gonna, I still have to draw these guys, but I'm gonna draw them on the ends. And that's because of that Vesper theory, they're gonna spread out as far apart as possible. So I prefer lines like this, what I just drew is acceptable, but this is my preference. But then I would put those electrons there. Now this would also be linear. Uh, this wouldn't have bond angles because we don't have anything to go around to have an angle with. Um, and this would be also nonpolar covalent because we were symmetrical, equally balanced, um, same thing attached. All right, let's do one more. Let's do CH2O, just like a few more pieces here. All right, so carbon has four. I have two hydrogens that each bond once, and I have my oxygen with six. Okay, same thing. What goes in the middle? Well, it's going to be carbon, so I start by drawing that. And now I've got two H's and an O, and again, I'm going to bond these all with single bonds. So I'm going to start with, let's see, and I could put an H here. I could put an H here for thinking we got to try to spread them out. It's fine. Notice now I have two sites on carbon, and I'm going to put one of the oxygens here. And what I have is... I still have, just like before, I have this single electron and this single electron, and they're going to come into the space between the carbon and oxygen and make a double bond. So this could look like this, and I could draw it just like this. Like that. That would be one way to draw it. I could also draw it, and this is my preference, with the lines, but then watch where I'm actually going to put the hydrogens. I'm going to put them here because with this carbon, when I have three sites where I have electrons, where I have bonds, I hope you can see that this would be trigonal, right? Because it's got three bonding sites and it's going to be trigonal planar because I don't have any lone pairs around carbon to make it pyramidal. So trigonal planar. 120 degrees. This would be polar covalent because in this case, 
I have this, the things are all equally spaced, but they're not all the same. Hydrogen and oxygen are going to have a different electronegativities. All right, so that is how to draw and a little bit more about uh, double and triple bonds.